For years, we've been waiting for OLED monitors to finally hit the market, but now that they're here, we have the agony of choice between two different types of OLED, Quantum Dot or W OLED. I really don't want to bother you with how these two differ on a technical level, but rather I'll show you the real life differences and actually help you decide which one is the best for you. So here are both types of OLED side by side. And yeah, we can immediately see that both of them must in fact be real OLEDs. You really don't get such a deep black level and high contrast with any other display technology that's available today other than OLED. So it's all fun and games and you can just buy any OLED monitor. End of the story? No, of course not. It's never that easy. Depending on how you actually use your monitor, you might want to avoid either W OLED or QD OLED monitors. To see which tech comes out on top, we need to look at a bunch of different scenarios. Let's start with gaming. You've probably heard that OLED panels have nearly instantaneous response times. And luckily, that's true for both QD OLED and W OLED. But side by side, the W OLED monitor that we have here looks better when things are moving across the screen fast. Blurbuster's UFO test demonstrates that nicely. As you can see, the UFOs look quite a bit sharper on the W OLED monitor. But that's because it's using a higher refresh rate, so it does have a better motion clarity than the QD OLED monitor that we're using for this comparison. But at the same refresh rate, both look basically identical, so this is something that's caused by the different refresh rates and not by the panel tech itself. Currently, QD OLEDs max out at 175Hz, while W OLEDs are available up to 240Hz. I've pretty much listed every QD OLED and W OLED monitor in the description down below in case you want to get a market overview or are looking to buy something. So W OLED currently has a small advantage for gaming, but just thanks to the high refresh rate that's available. But what about colors? QD OLED is supposed to have the juiciest and most saturated colors. And yeah, that's pretty much true. This monitor has some of the most intense colors I've ever seen on a screen. It has about 1.6 times the color gamut volume of sRGB, which really is a lot. But don't underestimate W OLED. 1.4 times sRGB really isn't that far off, so colors are still very, very saturated. I think most people would be really happy with the colors you can get from both of these panel types. But yeah, QD OLED has the slight edge here. Now before we continue our comparison, let's talk about Ugreen, who sponsored this segment of this video. The Ugreen USB-C 9-in-1 docking station turns your laptop into a multi-monitor workstation. It connects to your Windows laptop or a MacBook with just a single USB-C cable and gives you a bunch of expansion options. You can connect up to two external monitors with either DisplayPort or HDMI. It's your choice if you want to mirror your monitors or expand the desktop across all of your screens. Dual monitor setups up to 4K 60Hz are supported with both Windows and Mac OS. And you don't even need to worry about running low on battery, because the Ugreen docking station can power your laptop or MacBook with up to 100 watts, which is enough to even fast charge some of the latest MacBooks. Just connect a suitable USB-C charger directly to the docking station and plug in your gigabit Ethernet cable for a fast and reliable internet connection. The front side of the aluminum case gives you access to two USB-A and one USB-C port, all of which are USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports and of a high-speed data transmission of up to 10 gigabits per second. If that sounds good to you, check out the link in the video description to learn more about the Ugreen docking station. Back to the video. Now so far, we haven't really uncovered anything that would really steer you towards either QD OLED or W OLED. Both are amazing for gaming and both have great colors with just minor differences between them. And both panel tags look insanely good in a dark room. In fact, under these conditions, you can hardly tell the difference between the two OLEDs. But this was recorded in a dark room. Watch what happens when we turn on the light. Suddenly, the QD OLED panel on the left looks much worse. The super deep black level is noticeably lifted and there now is a faint magenta tint. Under these conditions, you really wouldn't guess that this is an OLED panel that's capable of rendering perfect black. So will every QD OLED monitor have this issue? Well, at least every QD OLED monitor that you can buy right now has this exact problem. And the same is true for current QD OLED TVs. Oh wow, I see it already. The gray? Holy crap, it's gray. Yeah, and when you turn off the lights, it looks black. 
I'm sure that Samsung Display, who make most of the QD OLED panels, are working to improve this, but as this is caused by a technical property of QD OLED, I'm not sure if they're gonna be able to completely eliminate this effect anytime soon. The W OLED panel of the other monitor is structurally different and doesn't have this issue. Of course, having light sources in front of the display is still something you should avoid if possible, but at least the black level of the W OLED panel isn't affected in the same way. Now, you might have noticed that these two monitors generally reflect ambient light in a different way. The QD OLED monitor happens to have a glossy coating, whereas the W OLED one has the typical matte anti-glare finish that we're used to seeing from most monitors. But you also find these types of panels with different coatings in the TV segment. So in the future, we might also see glossy W OLED monitors in a smaller form factor, or even matte QD OLEDs. For now though, Every W OLED monitor smaller than 42 inches has a matte coating and every single QD OLED monitor is glossy. That's definitely something to keep in mind when shopping for an OLED, especially if you have a strong preference for either matte or glossy. But no matter the coating, both OLED techs kind of struggle in bright rooms. OLEDs simply lack the brightness output to overpower lots of ambient light. QD OLED though is often said to be the brightest OLED tech. And yeah, when we compare these two monitors side by side, the QD OLED monitor that we have here indeed is slightly brighter than the W OLED. Accounting for the human perception, the QD OLED monitor on the left is about 6% brighter. So yeah, it is a perceivable difference, but we also have to keep in mind that there are W OLED monitors like the ASUS PG27 AQDM, which is hitting the same full screen max brightness level as QD OLED monitors. So the max brightness is also influenced by other factors and not only determined by the type of OLED panel a monitor is using. We see a similar effect when it comes to HDR. QD OLED again has the tendency to be a bit brighter than W OLED, at least when larger parts of the image need to be bright, but also with very small specular highlights. Side by side, this brightness difference definitely is visible. But honestly, without a direct side by side comparison, it's really not that obvious in many scenes. And the brightness difference between these two monitors also changes depending on how large the bright areas actually are in a particular scene. So between about 10 and 40% APL, this W OLED monitor even is slightly brighter. And we also need to remember that this depends on how the manufacturer chooses to tune a given panel. As Zeus demonstrate again, the W OLED can also be pretty bright. So yes, QD OLEDs typically reach slightly higher brightness values, but every manufacturer has different approaches to tuning, so the max brightness is only very loosely connected to the panel tech. Though the panel type has a significant impact on how good or bad these monitors are at displaying text and graphics. QD OLED and W OLED panels use pixel layouts that are different from each other and different from a typical non-OLED display. And unfortunately, that causes both types of OLED to struggle with displaying text. Okay, I'll show you what I mean. Here are macro shots of both displaying black text on a white background. Right away, it's pretty obvious that these panels are structurally very different. Here's what it looks like when every subpixel is on. It's a bit easier to see now that W OLED is using an RW BG stripe layout, while QD OLED is using a triangular RGB layout. Both of these are non standard. So your PC or whatever you're connecting your monitor to really doesn't know how to probably address these weird looking pixels. Naturally, this causes some issues. Like take a look at the folder icons, for instance. On the W OLED, they have red fringes on the left and green on the right, while the QD OLED shows green fringes on top of the folders and magenta at the bottom. Obviously, neither is ideal, but in most instances, I find the defects of the QD OLED to be a bit less annoying. However, I do slightly prefer how the W OLED handles black text on a white background and word and such. After a clear type run, the text basically looks as good as on a normal layout panel. But keep in mind that not all programs support clear type and this doesn't apply to graphics. So most of the time, the triangular RGB layout of QD OLED is ever so slightly less annoying. But honestly, both panel tags really aren't optimal for reading text. So sometimes choosing between QD OLED and W OLED is like being caught between a rock and a hard place. I mean, don't get me wrong, both of these monitors are amazing for gaming and watching videos or movies, but both QD OLED and W OLED have some significant drawbacks and quirks in comparison to our good old LCD monitors. And we haven't even talked about burn-in yet, which as you probably know is the permanent image retention that can be an issue with OLED displays. So how do these monitors stack up? The truth is, 
We don't know yet how big of an issue burn-in actually is on any kind of OLED monitor. Yes, there are a few bits of anecdotal evidence, like people on Reddit showing burn-in on their monitors, but no one has done proper testing with OLED monitors under controlled conditions yet. So we don't know if burn-in is something that occurs under normal conditions, and we don't know if either QD OLED or W OLED monitors are more or less prone to burn-in. However, we can make some guesses based on the testing and investigations that have been done with OLED TVs. Artings really took one for the team and destroyed a bunch of TVs for their testing. And one of the things they found out is that how the panel is implemented can have a huge impact. So even when two different TVs are using a very similar W OLED panel, they found that one brand's product can be vastly more prone to burn in than the other. Likely, that's true for monitors as well. As monitor manufacturers, just like TV manufacturers, all have different approaches to cooling, firmware, compensation cycles and so on. Artings also made another very interesting observation. A QD OLED TV they tested showed significantly more burn-in than a comparable W OLED TV. This might have been caused by the QD OLED's lack of a white subpixel, which can do the heavy lifting with bright white highlights, but this also could have been caused by other factors and it's not clear yet if these results are applicable to monitors as well. If I had to bet though, I'd say W OLED monitors probably gonna be slightly more resistant to burn-in than their QD OLED counterparts. But this is pretty much just my speculation, so you should not let that influence your buying decision too much. So which one should you go for? QD OLED or W OLED? In most cases, this decision really is predefined by which monitor size and form factor you want. Like if you prefer a standard 16x9 monitor, W OLED currently is your only choice. Likewise, if you're looking for a 34 inch ultra wide, the only available panel right now is a QD OLED. That's the panel that this Philips monitor and all the other QD OLED monitors from Alienware, MSI and so on are using as well. W OLED generally comes in a few more sizes, resolutions and refresh rates, but choices still are somewhat limited, especially if you're looking for a reasonably sized monitor. I've put together a list of all W OLED and QD OLED monitors that are currently on the market in the video description, so you can get the full overview of what's available today. There isn't much overlap between W OLED and QD OLED monitors just yet, so most of the time your choice is going to be pretty dependent on the monitor size, resolution or refresh rate you're looking for. This should be changing in the future though. We're expecting a 34 inch W OLED ultra wide panel to begin production in 2024 and Samsung reportedly are working on smaller QD OLEDs with a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So in the future we likely gonna actually have the choice between W OLED and QD OLED for many sizes, resolutions and refresh rates. It's unclear when exactly we're gonna see monitors with these panels, but this is probably not gonna happen before 2025. But let's pretend for a bit that we already had the choice between QD OLED and W OLED monitors with similar specs. So which one should you choose in that case? Or if you just don't care whether you're getting a 34 inch ultra wide or a regular 27 inch monitor? Well, having used both of these monitors extensively, I have to say that I ever so slightly prefer W OLED. But that's because I have a window on my right side, which really doesn't go well with the QD OLED panel. I find the black lift and magenta tint rather annoying. But if I was only ever using my monitor at night or with the outside blinds down, I'd slightly favor QD OLED because of the ever so slightly less annoying pixel layout. Thanks for watching, man sieht sich im nächsten Video.